I was looking, and I kind of remember my son back when he was a teenager, and we got the internet, or we got cable, and I start watching all these old movies. And he told me, he says, uh, Dad, not all black and white movies are good. And, you know, when I looked at him, I said, I think they are. They had a plot. Well, this week I've discovered on my Roku channel that if I just go to Antenna, I get an extra four or 5,000 channels that I didn't know I had. And I, and I started watching some of my old time movies on there. And, uh, and one of the movies was called The Saint. And the saint was like a, a pre-James Bond guy. And in fact, he ended up, Roger Moore ended up being, playing one of the James Bond movies. And so I, I was thinking about that, and it, it was in black and white, and then it got into color. But anyway, I don't want to digress, but it made me think about the word saint. And I just looked up a couple scriptures about the saint. And, you know, we have all these people talking about St. Francis, St. So-and-so, and St. So-and-so, but we're all called to be saints. We're all called to be saints. Now, I looked at a couple of scriptures, and they're just kind of introduction scriptures to the, to the passage. But in Romans 1, 7, it said, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from our God, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Then I looked at 1 Corinthians 1.12, another greeting, unto the church of God, which is in, in Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that is in every place called upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. Well, first of all, we see that it says that they were called. They were all called and they spoke grace and peace to each one of them. So what I'm going to speak right now, as y'all saints of God now, that I'm speaking peace and grace to each one of us. That God will pour out peace and grace to us abundantly. And that we will realize that we are called by God to be saints. Now we see in that second verse, it says that to them that are sanctified, and when we look at the word sanctified, that means to be set apart. That when we are called by God, that we are set apart from other people. We understand that what does it mean to be, to be a saint or what is it to be sanctified? First of all, we have to understand the word saint means that it's those who become holy those who are devoted are consecrated. That when we are saints that we're called and we set apart for the service of God. We are totally set apart for God's good work to work in us. So we have to understand, it seems like a radical idea that we are set apart, that we are totally away from the world standards, but we are brought into the godly realm. And so we see that we are all separated and our whole pursuits and our whole objectives in life is to become his servants. Our whole objective is to be used by God. We have to understand that, that we are, first of all, that it said that we are sanctified. 
Well, in John 17, 7, John 17, 7, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth, and thy word is truth. So we understand the word is the word of God, and the word of God is truth. And he tells us that we will know the truth and will be set free. So when we're getting set free, we are set apart from the bondage of this world. We're set apart from sin. We are set apart from ungodly living. Now we understand that we are being set, we're set apart for his service. That we are no longer of the world, but even though we're in the world. So we have to understand that. Well, we looked at this and we said that one of the things that the word saint means to be holy. Well, he, in 1 Peter 1.16, 1 Peter 1.16, it says, Because it is written, Be you holy, for I am holy. So he is calling, when we get a set apart, that our desire and our pursuit is to be holy because God is holy and Christ in us is our hope of glory and brings us to the point of holiness. So we have to understand what is holiness. First of all, holiness is pure in heart. That our way we believe in our heart is pure. That it is sanctified. It is things, our intentions are there. Our temperament and our disposition is holy. So we have to understand that we are changed because we're called to be saints, that we're set apart for his service, and we have to understand that our temperament should change, our disposition should change because of the holiness of God, that because he is holy, his desire for us to be called unto holiness. And also it means that when you are holy, that you're free from the bondage of sin. Now, it doesn't mean that you're not going to sin, but it tells us that we have the choice to sin or not. We have that choice. Now, with in our human perspective, in our nature, it, we, we sometimes fall back into bondage of sin. But we desire to become holy because we're set apart for godly service. So we have to understand this, that we need to set our affections on the things above instead of the things of this earth. Now we see that we say that he's called us to be saints, to be holy. And he says, be holy because I am holy. So that is, should be something that we pursue, that we set our minds upon him and on th heavenly things. Think our thoughts are on things of things above and not beneath. So we have to understand. Another thing to become, being part of us, because we are called, is that we don't become saints, that we are called as saints, that we become totally devoted or consecrated. Totally devoted. That means that we become so devoted to the things of the Lord that we're de dedicated to Him for our service and for our worship. That we worship no other God but by Him. It's just Him we worship. Our worship, our affections are set towards Him. And we learn to praise and worship him. He calls us to be so dedicated, so devoted that we sent our praises out to him. That we're so dedicated and we worship him instead of the other gods of this world. And we say, what are the other gods of the world? Well, it could be people. It could be automobiles. It could be material things. It could be just even ourselves. Sometimes we even put our family relationships above God and we worship our family more than him. But if we learn to worship God, he teaches us how to 
have the better relationships with our family. We have to have it in perspective. We need to worship God, then our family, our church, and then our government. We have to, our country, we get to that point in our life that we're consecrated to worship him, to look to him in all things, that we're set for by his service. And when we're set by his service, we serve him, but then we it kind of trickles down that we're able to serve our family properly, that we're able to serve our church properly, and we're able to serve our country properly because we're set apart as saints, as saints because we're called out and we're devoted and we're dedicated to him. And when we get it all in perspective, all the things will fall back into order. We have to, in Colossians, 3.23, it says, Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as in the Lord and not unto men. So what does that say? That if we're going to serve God, we need to serve him with all our whole heart, not just do it haphazardly serving God. I think that's the problem that we have as being called out, as we called out to become saints, that we, too many times, we serve God haphazardly, that we serve him at just when we come to church or just when we're others, around other saints, that we just serve him when it's convenient for us instead of a lifestyle and a way of life, that we serve him at every moment of our life. So he's telling us, to serve him wholeheartedly, just not haphazardly, just when he's convenient. But he, the thing is, he's never inconvenient because he's always there. He's never leaves us or forsake us. So we need to serve him in every area of our life, in every of our life. And we're doing it not unto men to get the pleasures of men, but for his good pleasure. But when we learn to serve him wholeheartedly, we serve men in the proper perspective, that we serve him the way it is into holiness, the way that we are dedicated, that we're devoted. Well, we see that when we understand this, in Matthew 16, 7, 16, in Matthew 7, 16, I was given this verse and I said, Lord, what is this? What is it? Why do I need you this verse? But in Matthew 7, 16, it says, Ye, You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? So what is it saying to us? When we're dedicated and devoted to God, what are we trying to gather into our life? Do we... Gather in all the things that can do harm to our life and to other men. Do we gather or do we get actually the fruits of the Spirit? Do we gather in what, how we can serve God better? How, that comes into our life. He's given us those fruits of the Spirit. That we are able to serve Him. That we can acknowledge Him in all of our ways. And we can do this. Well, First Peter 1 Peter 2, 5 says, you, are, you also as lively stones, and I'm going to say, and you as saints, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to, to God. Let me read that again. You also, as saints, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit that lives in us, that a holy priesthood, uh, that we are called out into his marvelous light to offer us spiritual sacrifices, that we get out of self and give our spirit to him and in all of our actions that we do 
it will be towards him. So we see that acceptable to God, that is what is pleasing to him. And we want to please him because what does he say? That we are his good pleasure. So we should be in return to please him. So we go on to Philippians, Philippians 2.15. Philippians 2.15. We desire, because we're called as saints, to, to be devoted and dedicated and to be holy. Because in Philippians 2.15 it says that you may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shall shine as the light of the world. One thing that we are called and we're set apart, we are sanctified, we are called saints, we are consecrated, we're devoted, we're dedicated, we are holy. For to be that light that the Lord wants us to shine to this world, that he is the light of the world and the world that's in us, that the light that he is in us, that we shine that light out to others. And he says that we're doing this because why? We're among a perverse nation. We can see more evil than we do godliness. We, we seem to tend to look at the evil instead of looking to God, which is his holiness, that he has made us holy and blameless so that we can let our light shine to all men. Well, and, and I'm going to say it's not easy. It's not easy living in this world, living in the nation. And we see doom and gloom and calamities and we see all this but that's the reason why we need to dedicate ourselves to God to become those saints that he's called us to be not in name only but in action also in 1 John 3 1 it says 1 John 3 1 it says behold what manner of love the father hath bestowed on us we don't have to do it on our own. He has given us the love that because the love that he's given to us, that because we love him, he loves us. He loved us before he loved us, before we loved him. And he's bestowed that love on us because that we should be called the sons of God or we should be called the saints of God that were set apart, that were sanctified for his service. Therefore, but there's the kicker here. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew not him. So it's going to be the world is going to come against us. And we see this now, how many churches are closing down, how many churches have no attendance. We have so many people, how the media is attacking the churches, how they're trying to take our rights away to even worship God. They're trying to do this in the name of equity, uh, whatever that word is, not equality, but equity. And that, that, that everybody should be treated the same. And they're treating even the people of sin as equals of the people that are blameless and spotless and pure. They're trying to say the people that do evil has as much rights or even more rights than the godly. And so we have to understand that we are in a perverse nation. But you know, the thing is, is that they don't know who we are. They don't know who we are. Because they choose not to know who we are. So that's the reason why we need our light to shine so that our light will overpower that darkness. That light will overpower that darkness. In 1 John 3, 2, it says, Beloved, he's calling us. He's saying, you saints that I've called you out that are dedicated to my service, that are devoted to me, that he's saying, now that you are sons of God, now that you are the saints that are called out, and it doeth not yet appear what will be, but ye will know that when he shall appear, 
We shall be like him. For when we see him as he is. So we see that that is our goal and purpose to be more like him. And when we be more like him, we become that light to this world in that perverse nation. That we are that light to those that do not know him. That's why we're called out. We're called out as saints to be devoted and dedicated to his service. To his service. And we see that then we get the ultimate goal that will be more like him. That we are been right now we're going through a process that we're molded into the image of Jesus Christ right now. We're being transformed in our dispositions, in our temperament. And the way that we think, we are being changed from one glory to other glory until we get to the maximum glory in his return. And we see him as he is. And we get to see that we are reflections of him. In 1 John 3, 3, it says, every man, every man, didn't leave anybody out, that has this hope. In him purify himself, even as he is pure. So our goal that he's called us to be saints, that dedicated for his service, devoted, that having that hope, having that holiness, that we are, we have that hope. And our desire is to become pure as possible. And the only way we can be pure as possible, because in ourselves we can't do, but with, through God, all things are possible. Even us can say that through God, he can make us pure and holy and sanctified and concentrated and dedicated to his service. So we see this, that he called us all to be saints. He called us out. And that is a high calling that he's called on us. Too many times we just go through the motions. And I am probably the worst through it. Until we realize that high calling that he's called us. That we become saints. That we are sanctified for his service. Not only for his service. But unto all men too. To bring him to the glory of God. That we become that ambassadors of faith. That we are the ones that call to the reconciliation, all men to him. That we are called with a high calling. That we are called saints in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, touch our hearts. Touch our minds. Touch our motivation. That you have called us out to be saints. That you have set us apart for your service. And Father, help us realize that high calling that you have called upon us to do. Father, give us a new insight of how wonderful and great you are. And Father, that you have that calling for us because you called us saints. That you are sanctifying us for your glory. And eventually we'll be just like your son Jesus. Because you've made us in his image. And Father that when we see Jesus. That we see his glory. And that glory will be put up on us. But Father help us to realize that we are saints. And you tell us to be holy. And that we have such a desire that we do things wholeheartedly, not haphazardly, but wholeheartedly in serving you in everything that we have, every breath that we breathe, that we will serve you because we have that hall calling that you call us saints. In Jesus' name, amen.